Sometimes when I'm messing around on OBS, there are some things that I want displayed no matter what scene I'm on. Things like sub alerts, lower thirds, image files, video files, that Game Boy camera widget that I made a video on that literally no one watched. Some of the effects I've made for my stream use sources that I want drawn on top of everything, no matter if I'm on my just chatting scene, my gaming scene, my BRB scene. And same thing goes for filters as well. There are some effects I've made for my stream that use shaders and filters that I don't want applied to just my camera. I want it applied to the entire screen. Well, it turns out OBS already has a plugin for that. In fact, the plugin has existed for almost three years. So why am I deciding to cover it now? I've been playing video games. It's called Downstream Keyer. This is another creation from Exeldro. And with this plugin, you're able to create global scenes. So imagine you have a video file in OBS and instead of adding that video source to all of your scenes one by one, you can just have that video display on top of everything. Same thing with filters. Let's say you wanted to add a blur filter and you want it to affect your entire screen so that even when you switch scenes, your screen is still blurred. You can do that with this plugin. This plugin has very quickly entered my OBS plugin hall of fame, which speaking of which next week's video, I will be revealing what's in my plugin hall of fame. We'll get into all that, but before that, let's do a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'm a visual learner and Brilliant is a great way to learn topics all the way from math to data science to computer science. Even though you won't be needing to code in today's video, a lot of my streamer bot videos, you do see me do some programming and some of you been wondering what is a great place to get started if I want to learn. And yes, you could just look up free classes on YouTube. I'm not going to pretend like they don't exist. I think Harvard literally puts up entire university lectures on programming, but interactive learning and a hands-on approach is a much more effective way of truly understanding what it is that you're trying to learn. Brilliant covers topics like programming and algorithms, and they're actually pretty good. I tried out their new creative coding course. It teaches you the fundamentals that every program first learns when they're first starting programming things like what's a variable what's an if statement how do loops work and brilliant uses visual and hands-on examples to really help you understand what each of those things are used for so if you want to try out brilliant just click in the link down below or go to brilliant.org nutty to try it out it's free for 30 days and the first 200 of you will get 20 percent off an annual plan okay so let's get started as usual i'll leave a link to the plugin down below it's pretty easy to install just go and click on the download button and click on the installer go through the installer it also does support mac i don't have a mac so i don't know how that works and it supports linux and i'm assuming if you know how linux works then you know how to install a plugin and if you don't i don't know why you're using linux uh, it doesn't support streamlabs because I canceled them, so like, uh, sorry for you Streamlabs. After you've installed the plugin, make sure to reboot OBS just to make sure that the plugin loads up. And if you did it correctly, if you go over to Docs, you should see an option that says downstream keyer, and it should be empty, it looks something like this. We'll do a quick example. So I went ahead and made an OBS layout specifically for this video. You're welcome, by the way. Okay, we got an intro scene. We got an outro scene, we got a just chatting scene, a gaming scene, and a BRB scene. The goal is we want to get this video of me booing myself. And we want to add that on top of the entire OBS canvas so that even when we change scenes, we can still see that video. Now you would think that you just come over and you drag the video into OBS and then you just take this video and you add it one by one into all of your other scenes. But with downstream here, there's a much better way. So we're going to start by creating a brand new scene. We're going to call this global. And inside of this global scene, we're going to add that video file again. I'm, I'm actually going to go and set this to loop so that we can just see the video and then stretch it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up this global scene here so that anything that we put into that scene will be drawn on top of all of the other scenes. So to do that, we're going to make sure that we highlight our global scene here, come over to the downstream here panel and click on the plus button and you should see the global scene appear under that panel. Then we're going to actually click on the global scene here to activate it. Now, if you go over to your other scenes, that video file plays even when we change scenes. 
And we haven't added the video to any of the, these other scenes. It's just drawing on top of everything else. And this works with every type of source, browser sources, image files. In fact, we'll do another example. We'll go back into that global scene here. And then I'm gonna drag this uh, little widget that I made. does like this blooper thing. Like, you know, when you're playing Mario Kart and then they get the blooper item and then it like messes up your game. Well I, well, I made a widget like that. And even when I change scenes, that splooge is on every single one of my scenes. By the way, we're probably gonna put that one on Patreon. So if you, if you want this widget, uh, I'll, we'll talk about the Patreon later. Now there might be particular scenes that you don't want the downstream keyer applied to. For example, on our outro scene or intro scene, maybe I don't want these sources laid on top of this. So if you click on the cog icon here, you can go exclude and just select the scenes that you want to exclude. Now you will have to do it one by one which is kind of annoying. I wish it was like a checkbox that popped up. But now you can see the video of me booing is not appearing on the outro scene or the intro scene. But then if I go over to, let's say the gaming scene, we can see that video pop up again. And then we let's try the, let's try the, the blooper. It appears here. If we go to the outro scene, it's not on this scene. And you can have multiple global scenes too. So I'm gonna go over and add a second one. I'm gonna call this one global two. And I'm actually gonna exclude global two from global one, just so we don't get them drawing on top of each other. Now, if I drag over this picture of uh, Pepe jamming out, you would think that we can just add a second global scene by clicking the plus here, and then the second one appears. But then if we go over to our other scenes, You'll see that it's only drawing the uh, the Boo video and not the Pepe video. And that's because you can only select one global scene at a time. So if you click in it here, that will activate the second global scene. And then you have to click on the first one to activate the first global scene. And the way around that is to just add more downstream keyers. So if you click on the cog, you can just add a second one. We're gonna call this DSK2. We'll remove global two from the first one. Make sure it's highlighted here. Come over to DSK2 and then we're gonna add, highlight global two here. We're gonna add it here and then activate it. And now if we come back to our just chatting scene, it's gonna draw both of the global scenes. Now make sure you pay close attention to which scene is highlighted in the downstream keyer panel because you'll notice that you can actually deselect by clicking the pause button. And now that uh, Pepe is not being drawn anymore, and that's because we haven't actually selected the scene here. So the UI is a bit weird. I really wish it had like, maybe in green writing next to global, it had like the word active, so you know which scene is active. Also the order of your DSKs matters. So you'll see if I drag this here, then the Pepe will go underneath the video of me booing myself. So the more to the right the DSK is, the more on top of your OBS canvas will be. So everything to the very right will be drawn at the very top. And then as you go left, it'll be drawn in layers underneath, if that, if that makes sense. Now, if you do wanna have multiple scenes under one DSK, I'm gonna call them DSKs, okay? Downstream keyer is too long. If you wanna have multiple scenes under one DSK, like we're gonna, we're gonna add global to, under the first one, you can set up transitions as well. So right now there's no transition. So if I switch to global two, it's kind of just a hard transition like that. But if you go over to the cog, you can set up your show and your hide transition. So if I set the show transition to fade and the hide transition to fade, now when I switch between them, it doesn't fucking do it. What's the fuck's going on? Oh, sorry, we gotta change the transition to fade as well. Now <laughs> you switch between them, it does a fade transition. All right, so what about filters? Okay, so let's do a simple example. Let's say I wanted to add a blur filter that affects the entire screen. Now you might think that you just go over to your global scene and you go into filters and we're just gonna add a composite blur filter. But as you can see, if I go to my other scenes, it's not blurry. None of them are, blur are blurry. So what the what the fuck, man? What's going on? This is where output sources come in, and this is gonna get tricky. But we're gonna go over to global, and if you right click and add, there's a new option that says output source. 
Uh, just press OK in this. And basically, this invisible source that you can't see here represents your entire OBS canvas. So everything that your viewers will see is represented by this big thing here. So if I go into studio mode and then go into our other scenes, you'll see that if I move this output source here, it's just drawing the entire canvas. And if you look in the right, which is what your viewers will see, there's kind of like, there's like two, there's like two of the outputs. This output source is what's gonna enable us to do those global filters. So we have two options here. We can again, go into the filters of that global scene and turn that filter back on. And then it's gonna start working because we have that output source. So if we go and we switch scenes, everything's gonna be blurry, even between transitions. The second option is we can apply our filters directly to that output source. So I'm actually gonna copy the filter here, go into the filters of the output source and then add it there. And we're gonna get the same sort of effect. Everything's gonna be blurry. Now in this example here, it's not exactly blurry because some of the unblurred scene is appearing behind the blurred scene. So we're actually gonna add a color source uh, just a completely black color source. We're gonna change it to black and put it underneath this output source. So now if we go into our uh, BRB scene. Now we're getting a true blur between our scenes. Now I prefer to add my filters directly to the output source. The reason is because now if I add our images into that global scene, like the Pepe sad jam, it's not gonna blur everything that we put on top of that output source. So now if we, if we change scenes here, we can still see the Pepe because that's on top of the blurred source. Now this doesn't seem practical. Why would I want to make my entire screen blurred? But there are some effects that I've made on my stream. For example, I have this shader that makes the entire screen go wavy. Kind of like, you know, like Yoshi's Island in the touch fuzzy get dizzy level where he like touches the thing and it's like he's on high, he's like drugs and everything. Uh, I have a shader that does just that, that my viewers can redeem via channel points. And that affects the entire screen. Even between transitions, that touch fuzzy get dizzy shader is affecting everything. Or if you really wanna get fancy, you can even animate that blur effect. So we're gonna use move transition. Uh, if you guys don't understand anything I'm about to say, don't worry, we'll explain in another video. But we're gonna add a move value filter here. We're gonna work on that composite blur. We're gonna change the blur radius and we're gonna set this to zero. And then we're gonna add another one, set the blur radius here. And now when we toggle these sources on and off, it sort of animates the blur in and out. So it's not just like a hard on and off. It slowly goes from blurry to clear. And I've used this effect for some of my widgets, like my make me a TikTok effect where this picture of a phone pops up and as it moves closer to the screen, everything behind the phone goes blurry, sort of like in uh, like a depth of field effect. So you could really use this uh, downstream keyer to do some really cool advanced effects if you know what you're doing. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's um, that's downstream keyer. Guys, uh, if you're interested in that Game Boy camera widget that uh, I showed earlier, uh, check out this video here. I made that video last week and literally no one watched it. It was heartbreaking. I worked really hard in that video and it was like the worst performing video in like two years. Uh, also that Game Boy Camera widget is up on Patreon along with other widgets I've created and will be creating more for you guys. Uh, it's just $10 a month. You could just pay for one month and then cancel and then you'll get access to like the dozen plus other widgets I've made. But uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know if that uh, helped you out in any way and um, yeah, that's uh that's how I'm gonna end the video.